can remember that now what he's doing is he's rebuking them because there's some issues surrounding the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Some people are using the Lord's Supper as a feast and they're getting drunk on wine and they're having a party and they're having a, a good time. And so there's some issues going on in the church and there's some people there in the church that, that are in need. And so there's this like big, like kind of big dividing line, like this side versus this side. Can you imagine if we go to celebrate the Lord's Supper and we're like pointing fingers at each other across the table and there's there's some tension and there's some, some hatred and some anger. And so what Paul's doing here is he's correcting some issues that are going on in the church because that's what most of Paul's letters are doing anyway. And so what he says here in verse 27, it says, Therefore, uh, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup in an unworthy manner. And so Paul is saying that some of you are, are eating the bread and drinking the cup in an unworthy manner. And so what are some ways that we do that today in our culture? Can, can we pop up the next quote from John MacArthur? Um, wait. Oh, never mind. I didn't put that one in there. You can, you can blank that out. That, was, that one's for the future. Let me, let me read this one to you. Uh, it's common for people to participate in, in the Lord's Supper ritualistically without participating with their minds and hearts. Remember, we kind of coast through it. We go through the motions. They can go through the motions without going through any emotions and treat it lightly rather than seriously. They can believe that it imparts grace or merit that the ceremony itself rather than the sacrifice it represents can save or keep one saved. Many come with a spirit of bitterness or hatred towards another believer or come with a sin of which they will not repent. And so these are some ways that we approach the, the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner today. And, and here's the thing that I want us to see is Jesus really even hits home on this in his Sermon on the Mount. If we were to look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 25, Jesus tells us that if you go to the Lord, you go to make a sacrifice at the altar to worship God, and you remember there that you um, have something against one of your brothers, what are you supposed to do? Just hold on to that grudge and hate that guy and say, God, I still love you. No. He says you leave it there. You leave your sacrifice at the altar. You go first and you be reconciled to your brother. And so Jesus says before we can worship God, and we can worship God in spirit and truth, we have to deal with the sin in our own lives. And so that's what Paul really gets at here. He says some of you are taking the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. But what he does here then is he, he corrects the issue and then he gives them a tool to move forward. He says then in verse 28, he says, let each person then examine himself then. And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And he says we must examine ourselves, which we're going to look at in just a second. We must examine ourselves so that we are taking it Properly. And he says the results of not taking it in a, in a worthy manner or, or taking it in an unworthy manner is ultimately we see in verses 29 to 32 is that God disciplines us. That's what he said is he's talking about judging. Uh, we judge ourselves and God judges us. And he talks about uh, how some people are uh, in verse 30. Some of you are weak and ill and some have died. Uh, this isn't judgment that God says that you're no longer in relationship with him. But it's, it's, a, it's a, a chastisement. It's a punishment. It's God correcting us and putting us back on the right track, helping us see and deal with our sin. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's the, our biggest issue is we, 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 deal with, we need to deal with sin. We kind of put it on the back burner so often and we need to deal with sin. We need to wrestle with our sin. And so what we see in verse 28 is that we must examine ourselves. Now, I want us to understand this, that a lot of times we grow to this point where we say, uh, Examine. We, we read that and we say, "Examine." I just need to think about my sin for like a couple minutes. You know, like we, we read this passage and we're fixing to take the Lord's Supper. So, oh, dear me, I, I forgot this Lord's Supper, and so um, I've got to do the invitation time. I need to sit and like think about you know those things that I've done over the last 24 hours that were wrong and that displeased God, and then like throw up and oops, God, I'm sorry. You know, like hopefully you know you're not going to like you know kill me or you know make me really sick. And we do that. That's I mean. But what we see is, is this, is that the actual terminology that Paul uses there for examine means to test or to scrutinize. And really it has to do with uh, like testing metal, testing the strength of metal. And it's a, it's a process. It's, it's something that we have to do. It's not just a, a two to three minute process. Now, we're going to come to the invitation time this morning and I'm, I am going to invite you to, to take some time. And it might be two or three minutes. To, to deal with God and let God deal with you. But what I ultimately want us to see is this examination isn't something that we do 
on the fifth Sunday of, of every quarter. It's something that we do daily. It's something that we, 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 we have to do prayerfully. We sit and we beg God, God uh, expose the sin in our heart. That we would ask God to shine the light of His gospel and the light of His mercy in the deepest, darkest corners of our life. That God would bring to mind and bring to our heart the issues that we deal with. Because whether we want to get, uh, admit it or not, we all have these issues that we need to deal with. We all have sins, secret sins in our heart, things that, that we battle with, things that we wrestle with, and what we need God to do, because we can't do it on our own. We need God to bring it to our mind, and what do we need to do? We need to confess, and we need to repent. And so this examination isn't just sitting and thinking and saying, God, I'm sorry, but it's this heartfelt brokenness and this need to confess and repent. And so this morning, as, as we, we come to the close of, of, of this, I, I want us to, to see that we need to examine ourselves. Let's pop up that next quote from John MacArthur. What we need to do, what does it mean to examine ourselves? We need to look honestly at our hearts for anything, another typo, uh, that should, another typo, that should not be there, uh, and sifting out all evil, our motives, our attitudes towards the Lord and His Word, toward His people, and towards the communion service itself should all come under the private scrutiny for the Lord. This isn't necessarily something, something sometimes we do. We need to confess sins to our brothers and sisters, to our, our husbands, our wives, our kids, whatever it is. But this is something that we need to do between us and the Lord. Uh, what that was. Uh, and so, this self examination. Uh, John MacArthur puts it this way uh, the self examination is a time where we ought to be discerning what we are and what we ought to be. What we are and what we ought to be. And so it's not something that can be done in a mere two minutes. It's something that we ought to be doing daily. Constantly examining our hearts and lives. Asking God to reveal areas of weakness uh, and sin. Uprooting those areas of weakness and sin. Fighting sin. Preaching the gospel to ourselves every day. We have tools in this word of God. In the gospel. In the Lord's Supper. To remind ourselves of our need uh, for for the gospel. And so this morning as we come uh, to the close of our message, um, I would invite you to self-examination. I would challenge you to ask the Lord to search those deep, dark corners of your heart and life to reveal to you the areas of great need and transformation. We're all invited to, to the table. We are invited to celebrate the love of our God, <coughs> reveal to us the sacrifice of the Son, and we are called to remember that He is enough. We are called to remember that He loves us, and that he then likes us. But we're also called to submit to his lordship and to his authority. Uh, there's a, a catechism. And sometimes we hear the word catechism and we want to freak out a little bit. Uh, but a catechism is just this um, rote thing to help us remember and teach children. And there's a catechism called the Heidelberg Catechism from like 1500. And question and answer number uh, question and answer number 80. The question is this, is who is to come to the Lord's table? Who should celebrate this? And let's just read that. Those who are displeased with themselves because of their sin, and yet trust that these are forgiven them, and that their remaining weakness is covered by the suffering and the death of Christ, and who also desire more and more to strengthen their faith and amend their life. And so this morning as we come to this time of invitation, as we come to this time of self-examination, how do you feel about yourself? As we come, uh, and not about yourself, how do you come to, to feel about your sin? Do you see that it's a, an issue in your heart that's, that's wrecking you, that's destroying personal relationships, that it's destroying your relationship with God, not destroying, but, but causing issues in your relationship with God? And are you willing to see and understand that it's forgiven, that it's covered because of the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ? And so as the, the uh, students come up to, to, uh, to lead us in the song, I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. So we'll do our invitation a little bit differently this morning. As they, they sing this song, I would just invite you to spend some time asking God to, to shine the light of the gospel into those deep, dark corners of your life. That you would ask God to expose sin that you would ask God to expose strongholds in your life. And that you would um, help, help, ask God to help you see your deep, desperate need for Him. And so we're going to play through this song. We're just going to spend some time asking God to do His work. Asking the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts and lives. And then we'll come to the table.